Hello everyone, Brian Tomaszewski here. In this video, I will teach you about the principles of cartographic symbolization. If you are interested in making effective maps for communicating different forms of data using Geographic Information Systems or GIS software, this video is for you. Modern Geographic Information Systems or GIS tools like ArcGIS Pro or the open source tool QGIS make it very easy to make beautiful maps. This is both a very positive yet potentially negative aspect of GIS software. In particular, if you're going to be making thematic maps, it's important that you understand some of the basic principles of cartographic symbolization so that your maps communicate effectively and do not mislead people who may be reading your maps. Therefore, in this video, I will cover two important topics. Data measurement principles as they apply to mapping and visual variables, which are the graphical forms that you can use for encoding data on geographic maps. One of the first important ideas to understand in cartographic symbolization is data measurement. Raw data are measured in four standard ways for map-based presentation. It is important to understand data measurement distinctions as these distinctions have map design choice ramifications, and thus, by extension, how well or not the map will be understood. I'll next talk about the four standard ways that data are measured. Nominal data are data where a code has been assigned to observations in the data. However, there is no numerical significance between codes. Nominal data are sometimes referred to as qualitative data. This image shows an example of a geographically mapped nominal data set. In this image, you are seeing a map of shrub, water, and unclassified land use categories. These land use categories do not have a numerical difference between them and are simply codes used to identify each land type. Ordinal data are data in rank orders, such as first, second, and third. However, there is no degree of numerical difference between items. A general example of ordinal data would be survey questionnaire responses such as very good, good, acceptable, poor, and very poor. Although there is a ranking between the responses, there is no indication of what specifically signifies one category from another. In a mapping context, this image shows an example of ordinal data. In this image, you are seeing road networks that show a ranking of different roads based on the jurisdiction of the roads across federal, state, and county jurisdictions. Like nominal data, ordinal data are often considered a form of qualitative data. Interval data are data that have been ordered with explicit indication of numerical differences between categories based on an arbitrary zero point. The classic example of interval data is temperature. For example, 10 degrees Celsius and 10 degrees Fahrenheit will not feel the same as they are using different zero starting points for their measurement. This contour map is an example of interval data mapping. Elevations shown in this map are measured from an arbitrary zero starting point of sea level. Interval data are a form of quantitative data measurement. Ratio data are similar to interval, except that there is a non-arbitrary starting point as the basis for measurement. Ratio data examples include temperature measured on the Kelvin scale, age, and weight. Ratio is also a form of quantitative data measurement. Now that we've discussed data measurement, I will next talk about how data measurement translates into the specific visual elements of a map and how they are represented. Two-dimensional geographic maps are generally created using three basic graphical building blocks that include points, lines, and areas, in addition to text for labeling map features. 
From these basic graphical building blocks, data and map feature representation and the message that that data and features are trying to communicate is communicated through visual variables. Visual variables such as size, shape, orientation, color hue, and lightness are not unique to mapping and are important overall graphical design devices. In a mapping context, they are essential to understand for properly matching the correct visual variable with the form of data measurement being mapped. This figure visually outlines the ideas of visual variables and their relation with data measurement using a disaster management example. For example, the size of a point symbol that changes to indicate the number of people affected by a disaster, or using different color hues to signify different types of hazard vulnerabilities. Visual variables are powerful graphical devices for communicating messages in geographic map form. However, when designing maps, it is important to remember to match visual variables correctly with data measurement of the feature being mapped. Mismatching visual variables, data measurement, and features can lead to maps that miscommunicate. For example, using different color hues but the same level of lightness to represent quantitative data. With these ideas in mind, let's now take a closer look at some other types of thematic maps to show you how the ideas behind the principles of cartographic representation translate into the creation of specific types of maps. A choropleth map usually aggregates data for display in a pre-existing region such as a state or county. Typically, data are displayed in two ways. The first is with a qualitative distinction between entities such as different color hues to show different land use types like you saw in this map. The second is with a quantitative distinction where magnitudes of data are shown using different levels of color lightness or saturation. For example, the darker the color, the greater the magnitude being shown. Choropleth maps often borrow ideas from statistical data classification in terms of the various methods that are used to classify data observation into data classes or bins. Once a data observation is assigned to a classification class, visual variables like size or color are used to represent values within the class. For more information on the ideas of data classification, check out this video on this channel. Proportional symbol maps use symbols of varying sizes that are proportional to the value or magnitude being shown and also use data classification methods to create bins. This example shows the number of people under 18 living below the poverty level as of 2003 from counties in the Gulf Coast region of the United States that were eligible for federal disaster assistance after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Isorhythmic maps use line symbols to display phenomena that are continuous in nature. For example, elevation is continuous. There is never a spot on the Earth's surface that does not have an elevation. Thus, contour maps, which are a type of isorhythmic map, have been developed to display surface elevation. In a contour map, elevations of the same value are connected using line symbols. In this map, each line represents a 10 meter change in elevation and changes every 100 meters as indicated by elevation labels. The closer the lines are to one another, the greater the elevation increase. A similar approach could be used for other continuous surfaces, such as temperature or precipitation. A dot density map shows the distribution of an observation or observations at specific points. The basic idea is that each dot can represent one or more instances of the phenomena at the point, making this a useful technique for showing patterns based on point observations. In this example, each black dot represents the location of a Twitter user who revealed his or her locations in their Twitter profile and tweeted 
about Hurricane Sandy between October 28th to October 31st. As one might expect, the United States appears almost black due to the density of tweets made in the United States. However, it is also interesting to note that Western Europe also appears almost black due to the density of tweets made, even though the event happened in the United States. Also interesting to note are tweet clusters that appear in other spots around the world, such as Africa and South America. In this video, I have shown you how the principles of cartographic symbolization, such as data measurement and visual variables, are the basis for the creation of thematic maps, such as choropleth, proportional symbol, isorhythmic, and dot density maps. Always carefully examine the data that you are going to create a map so you can make proper decisions about how to symbolize that data using geographic information systems or GIS software tools. If you master the skills shown in this video, you will be well on your way to creating effective geographic visualizations. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.